This video is sponsored by KJR Consulting, LinkedIn profile consultations for engineers. No matter what you study in college, you're going to have a love-hate relationship with your major. Throughout my four years, there was a lot I really loved and a lot I wasn't so much a fan of. Yes, this video will be more about my college experience as an engineer, but I made you one on my first engineering job as well. I'm going to start with the things I did not like so this video ends on a more positive note. The number one thing I think everyone's expecting me to say is how much work it was. And that is number one on my list, sort of. When I went into engineering, it was not because engineers make good money or my parents forced me into it. It was because I really wanted to study it. The combination of math and science to understand how things worked really intrigued me. So when I came to college, I really enjoyed a lot of the homework and projects I ended up doing. I really liked being faced with a tough problem and having to figure it out no matter how long it took. But even though I liked a lot of the work, it was the stress that was the tough part. There were plenty of times where I didn't feel like I could take too long to finish an assignment because I had like 10 others due that same week. Yes, it was fun working on an engineering project. It was not fun when that project was not working the day before it was due and I had no clue why. Don't get me wrong, it was manageable and I made it through, but I'd be lying to you guys if I said there was no stress to it at all. The second thing I did not like about engineering, which is kind of two things, was lab reports and labs being one unit when they required way more work than one unit should. Now, lab reports are important and needed even in the real world because you will be doing write-ups and making technical documents, but that did not make me love them. Just don't confuse me saying I didn't like something with it's not important because those are two different things. Like, let's just look at this lab report I had my fourth year. So this is a lab report from my digital signal processing course. And yes, I picked the course that had the longest lab reports. This is 20 pages long right here, but note that most of it is filled up with graphs, copy and pasted code, tables, and more. So yes, it was a lot of work, but it was all these little things that really added up. Things like putting a caption on every single image or graph that we had to make, or putting calculations on every single report, which required searching for every single symbol or operation individually, such as division or an exponent and so on. Then making tables took some time. This one right here was short, of course, but there were lab reports where I had to do way bigger tables that were like 10 by 10 or 15 by 15. Honestly, I loved a lot of the labs I did, including this one. I just got really tired of doing the same lab reports over and over again. Some lab professors also really strict. So if you didn't put a caption for every single image or graph, or you labeled the axes wrong on these graphs, you would get docked points. And because there were so many of them, you could lose a lot of points if you made the same mistake consistently. Not all lab reports are that bad. In fact, some are very easy. This class just did have really long ones. But I did over a hundred of these, I'd say, so it did get fairly repetitive. And also depending on how far you are in your college career, getting an A plus in a lab can be meaningless to your GPA. Yet if you don't pass, you'll have to retake it. Of course, you just still put in effort. I'm not saying don't try, but after like 50 lab reports of doing the same thing, it will start to feel really repetitive. The number three thing I did not like about engineering was the amount of time it took to finally feel like a real engineer. What I mean by this is that for the first few years of college, I really didn't make anything that had any direct applications. I hooked up circuits, I measured voltages and currents, I learned how to use equipment, but I really didn't make anything that would be of use to anyone until like my third or fourth year. I spent a lot of time learning theory and doing the basics, but even at the beginning of my third year, I remember saying I don't feel like I could be of any use to a company or some engineering club if I was asked to do something. Like I could tell you the amount of power dissipated in some AC circuit, but I could not tell you how to make a robotic arm move or even how to make a circuit that adjusts the volume on a speaker. All of that did come later though, and while I still don't feel like a professional engineer, I did eventually make real projects with applications. Now what about what I loved about engineering? The first on that list is learning the theory and having an understanding of the world around me. For example, I loved learning the math behind how signals are analyzed. I learned one signal manipulation technique called modulation, then began to understand how changing that amplitude actually affects the signal on a deep level and why the signal looks like that. And then it came full circle to how AM radio stands for amplitude modulation and why this technique is needed to transmit the signal. I thought that was so cool when things just came together like that, especially with things we use and see almost every day. I also love learning how complex numbers are used to analyze how circuits behave when algebra that we learn in high school just won't do. I love learning how ones and zeros are manipulated within our computers and how digital circuits work and plenty more. Getting to the roots of how modern technology and other systems truly worked was very interesting to me. 
I've always been a math and technical person and have no problem sitting down with a complicated problem and just focusing on it until I figure it out no matter how long it takes. At least with subjects I find interesting. You won't see me putting in hours of effort to write a great essay or read up on American history until I understand it. But with a subject I really enjoyed, I had no problem putting in that effort. The second thing I loved was the projects, labs, and making things actually work. The hands-on stuff does seem to interest people the most when it comes to engineering, and I will say it's very satisfying seeing an LED light up because of a circuit you made, or a game pop up on the screen because of a program you wrote. In fact, I still have the first real engineering project I ever made. Now, before I show you guys what's in this, I want to let you know I had no clue what I was doing when I made this. They really just told us what to do and how to do it, and we just followed the instructions. So here's the inside of it, and I'll probably need the camera to focus. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna come up to the camera. So as you can see, there's a lot going on here, and I had to put together basically everything that you see. I was given this circuit board and had to solder on every capacitor, resistor, diode, and everything else that you see here. But again, I had really no clue what I was doing. You might be able to see how the circuit board is labeled exactly what components to put where. I had to connect all the wires that you see here. I had to connect the wires to the on and off switch that's located out here, but with the top open, you can see what's actually happening behind that when you turn it on. So yes, there is a lot going on here, but this was a 10 week project that did take the entire quarter to finish. I unfortunately don't have the cords to show you how this worked, but what would happen is you would adjust these knobs, this one or that one, and the numbers on here would change. And what that was was the voltage coming out, which could be measured across here. And honestly, it was really cool to see numbers change on this, to see things happen when you turn something because of the crazy circuitry that was going on in here. So that was one of the things I really liked about engineering was just seeing things work that were way more, that were way beyond what I'd ever done before. Another thing I enjoyed about the projects was using theory to debug real world issues that you really don't think about before going into a certain project. As a very simple example, I was in my microcontroller class working on a signal generator project. I had to do a project where a square wave voltage signal would be output that we could observe on an oscilloscope. But you could press a button and it would change to a sine wave voltage, and then click the button again and it would change to a sawtooth wave. And then it would keep cycling if you kept pressing the button. This involved working with circuits but also programming. Now at one point I thought I was done because everything was connected perfectly. But when I pressed the button, something happened that wasn't supposed to, and I'm sure many EEs out there can guess what I'm about to say. I would press the button and it would skip from the square wave to the sawtooth wave, and totally skip the sine wave. Or sometimes it would flash the sine wave real quick, but wouldn't stay on it. And I had no clue why that was happening. The professor came over and said, yep, everything connected looks fine, but in the real world, components don't work exactly as you'd want them to. So like real engineers, we had to figure out what the issue was, and then figure out how to resolve it. You can know all your circuit theory, but until you do a real world project, you won't experience issues like this that don't come up on paper. They come up because things in the real world aren't perfect. Now the problem ended up being with the button. When I clicked the button, the voltage coming out of it wasn't behaving properly. I was supposed to see the voltage be flat and then jump once I pressed the button, signaling a change to the next wave. But what I saw from pressing it once was a jump up, then quickly back down, and then quickly back up. That jump up signaled a quick change sometimes that I could not see, and then back up would signal the next change, hence why I saw it skip. But once you find an issue in an engineering project, the next step is to resolve it. And as some of you may know, voltage cannot change super quickly across a capacitor. So connecting that with the button allowed the voltage to not just jump up and down very quickly, which is exactly what we needed. Debugging can definitely be annoying, but I did find it interesting to solve problems like this sometimes. The next reason I loved engineering was because it led to a more defined career path. Like, if you major in biology and you just get a bachelor's, it's very unlikely you'll become a biologist and you'll end up in some other career. But as an electrical engineer, after just getting a bachelor's, I was able to apply to electrical engineering specific jobs. The next reason I loved engineering was that it did pay well. I did have to include this. I did not go into the major for the money, and if you just want to make money, I highly recommend something else. But it is true that engineers can make a lot right out of college. Even my internship allowed me to afford my own place during the summer while I worked. I did a whole video on my engineering salary and expenses, so I'm not going to go into any more detail. And the last thing I loved about engineering was the range of projects you could work on even while being specialized. This may not apply to all engineering disciplines, but as an electrical engineer, I was able to apply for jobs in the biomedical sector, power generation, robotics, aerospace and defense, self-driving cars, and so on. I got an internship where I worked on a wireless printing device, and then I got a full-time job working on government satellites. 
I was never stuck in one specific field, which was very nice, especially when looking for my first job where I wasn't too picky on what I'd be doing. And that's my list, you guys. Please don't let any of the reasons I did not like engineering discourage you from it, as that's never the intention with these videos. There was way more I loved about engineering compared with what I did not like, but I just wanted to be honest with everyone. I wanted to highlight the reality of what it was like for me, not just go over the positives. I want everyone to be motivated and excited, but also truly prepared. And before I end this, I want to thank my sponsor, Kenneth of KJR Consulting. Kenneth offers consulting to help engineers optimize their LinkedIn profile so you have the best odds of finding your dream job and standing out among other profiles. He offers one-on-one -on -one consultations for a very good price, so if you want to schedule a consultation or just reach out with questions, the link can be found below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Be sure to join the Major Prep Facebook group and follow me on Twitter for updates, and I'll see you all in the next video.